there, this is William with CommanderCast.com doing the deck tech wrap up for Avacyn the Dark Edition. Overall, pretty happy with all those games went. We've definitely come a long way for just in the short amount of time from the original alpha thing to the point where we're actually interacting with people. We're getting some good games in and I think we're actually affecting things. Most of it has been admittedly uh, Avacyn getting in there punching through for significant amounts of, of damage. It's going to help out a lot when we just get some more quality creatures. I can't keep uh, emphasizing this point is that we're just at that point in Magic's history where the creatures aren't good. Like, we have some okay stuff. Uh, Personal Incarnation is the closest thing we have to a Titan right now just because it's a 6-6 six, six for 6. Uh, Sarah Angel is the next step down on that ladder. It's still very good. We're still seeing Sarah Angel regularly, and she's still pulling her weight, oddly enough. Like, it's actually really cool to see Sarah Angel, you know, kind of hanging in there with some of the other things. Obviously not going to be able to take on a Tarka by herself, but with teamwork and some banding, we can get there. Very happy to have the Knights of Thorn too. If we had seen both of them, then that actually would have been a lot better. In fact, the fact, in fact, he has protection from red already, so that's mana that Abazin doesn't need to be using in case, you know, we get like a big Infernal Titan or whatever attacking us. We can go ahead, block all the things. Let's see. As far as the additions to this deck, we did get to see the Dust to Dust. We didn't really get to use the Preacher, unfortunately. I feel like that would have been a good game for us since we could have just started taking the Mono Blue Player stuff. And storing them under the Safe Haven, too. But the Fellow War Stone, that was relevant. It's a little bit of Mana Rock production. The Mana Rocks have been really big for Avacyn, particularly, you know, but we only have the three of them. The Mana Vault is not good enough for the abs because of the uh, the lack of voltaic key and all the crazy stuff that goes on with that. But Soul Rain and Basalt Monolith have been really clutch for us. We've seen, we got to see the Urzatron, but the Urzatron just didn't really matter. Tormod's Crypt, yes! Love this thing! You know, just saw that for the majority of our games today, and it was always relevant. Graveyard Hate is incredibly powerful, kids. Make sure you use it. This little piece of tech that has been around since the dark, and it's still one of the most powerful graveyard hate cards that, that you can play in your EDH deck. It literally goes in any deck. In fact, if you're building an EDH deck, I know that some people are going to harp on, you know, you shouldn't put a Soul Rain and a Sensei's Divine Top. You know, don't start your commander list with like 20 staples. But for absolutely sure, start your commander list with a Tormod's Crypt. You know, even before Soul Rain, start it with a Tormod's Crypt. And then just use it as a placeholder for other graveyard hate if you need room for other stuff. But always, always, always include your graveyard hate for EDH games. Because otherwise, because without this, then Tormod Creators just keeps looping back all the artifacts. And Gahiji's efforts are all for naught. So Tormod's Crypt, All-Star, very much expecting this to be in there for a long, long time. Uh, looking at some of the other stuff, though, uh, the Witch Hunter we didn't really get to see. That would have been a lot more relevant, though. I probably should have used it, or not at least not blocked with it, I guess, or something that last game. But the tempo is going to be important. It's going to be important to, you know, keep the Tromo Kratos off of attacking or whatever we can do. Uh, let's see. The other points, though, the lands. The Maze of Ith, we didn't really see. That's Safe Haven, though. I'm actually tempted to cut Safe Haven. Like, it's a good card. It's pay two to save a creature, and we can sack it to bring it back on the turn. But one, those triggers are eating our time, even on a 40 minutes thing. We'll have to learn to play a little bit faster when we have it, and to only play it out when we're ready to play Avacyn, because, oh gosh darn, is that just, that, it, the time that that trigger eats is a lot. So, if, you, if it was on paper, you know, we wouldn't have this problem, but we do have to keep moto considerations in consideration here. Uh, it's two, just the and tap, so that's not bad in of itself. We do have three lands that don't produce mana, though. Safe Haven, Maze of Ith, and Bazaar of Baghdad. So, one of these might have to give. You could argue that Mistress Workshop doesn't make mana sometimes, but we're artifact-heavy artifact heavy enough that 
it's going to account for making mana a lot of the time. So, yeah, really considering cutting Safe Haven, I probably won't. I might not. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, though. Yeah, if that's going to be the topic, if I should cut Safe Haven or not. So, next up, we'll be looking at going into the Fallen Empires. And I think some a little after that might be Alliances. Yeah. Looking forward to upgrading some of these. Uh, well, I mentioned earlier in the video was uh, someone had asked me what set I'm looking forward to. And I told you guys that it was going to be Mirrodin. Uh, I'm also looking forward to seeing the Time Spiral. Just because we're finally going to get to be in on some of these jokes. Like the, when I was looking at the Diablo Archer, I saw the Diablo Healer from Time Spiral. And it clicked. It's like, oh, this is the callback. You know, now we actually are getting to see a lot of the really older cards. And when we go to Time Spiral, uh, we'll, have, we'll have a fun uh, little thing. I'll, hopefully I'll have learned how to edit video by then. But uh, the goal at that point is to do a fun, hey, let's go ahead and compare the things that we've been through. Whew. So I think that about wraps it up for next week. I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Don't forget to go ahead. And if you like what we do here at Commander Cast, you know, uh, consider, consider giving us a tip. And just a tip. But if a little more slips in, we won't complain. Remember, if you're a $5 donator, then you're going to get to see these videos early. If you're do a $10 donator, you're getting the bonus set review uh, videos that I'm putting up there. So, until next time, guys. This has been William from Commander Cast. Let's get it!